I want to share with you some simple concepts just about playing the instrument, whether you've been playing it for a while, a few years, or you just picked it up. There's a reason why you wanted to play the bass, and it's because you love it and you love that deep bass sound. And you've also heard other bass players that you really enjoy. So first, I just want to talk about creating a nice sound on the instrument. So just take your bass, stand up, and I just want you to try playing your D string. Play it a few times. And now if you notice, my finger is going directly into the A string. I'm pulling, I'm going into the A string. I'm not using too much effort, really. Just pulling it and letting it go. Same with the A string. Now with the E string, there's obviously no other string behind it. So what I kind of like to think of is a turning motion, like you were turning a door or the key to a car. I just turn it and keep my, my thumb under the fingerboard. Turn it that way so I can still get a nice big sound. Now if I wasn't stopping, if I, if I wasn't going directly into the next string and I was pulling outward, not only am I using way too much energy, because I always say bass players, we're not lazy, but we have so much work to do. We're always playing in the band, constantly playing behind everybody's solos and all that. We want to make it easier on ourselves. So instead of pulling away and out, I have nothing to stop me from doing that. And I can't hardly play all night like this or even play an up-tempo song like that. No way, I'm going to fall over. So just use the natural, your natural energy of your whole entire arm, you know, from your shoulder down and use gravity. Let gravity do all the work for you. And just go right into the next string. And also I want you to notice my string, my, my index finger is going into the next string. I'm not lifting it up right after. I'm not going. And again, you can play however is comfortable to you. As long as you're using that gravity, you can approach it from the side. This way, using two fingers. The main point I want to get across is, are you getting the, the nice sound that you want? And if you would like to play a little bit softer, that's fine too. Um, as long as it's, that's what you're hearing in your head. Uh, the goal I want you to achieve is that any sound that you hear in your head that sounds good to you, that you want, you should be able to get it on the bass. So that's just a little bit about tone and sound production. Obviously, if the more my right hand slips up the fingerboard, the softer the sound is going to get. So you can mess around with that as well, just so you know where your sweet spot is, as we like to say. On, on, on every instrument, it's different. Um, some people you might see play almost even past the fretboard. You don't have to do that. You don't have to play up here. You play where the sound sounds really great to you. Um, and for me, on this instrument, I kind of like this sound right here. I'm just at the edge of the fingerboard, but you just play around with that. Just play your open strings and then start to mess around if you're, if you're just picking up the instrument again, the bass. Then you start to mess around with having that strong left hand. You know, when one finger is down, they're all down. So if my pinky's down, all the fingers behind it are down. And think about having that nice sound again, that nice big tone. And again, my right hand, gravity is doing the work for me. And my left hand, I'm really digging into the string. Not to the point that it's painful, but I'm really digging in. And all my fingers are in the position where they would be. If I'm playing, I'm playing an F natural right now. My first, second, and third finger are down. We don't really use our third finger in this position. But if I were to play my second finger, it should be on E natural. My first finger should be on E flat. So that's another thing that's very helpful with your left hand. You always want your fingers to be in the position that they're, that they're on top of. If my hand was scrunched up like this and I was playing F, and I was playing, I wanted to play E flat, I'd have to shift my whole hand back and kind of contort my arm a little bit. We just want to make it 
easier on ourselves. Like I said, playing the bass, we have so much to do already, let's make it easier. And along those lines, we also want to keep our fingers close to the fingerboard as best as possible. So I'm going to demonstrate this just by playing an F major scale. And I'm going to do it a little bit sloppily. Okay, that was super sloppy. It was still like, for the most part, in tune, but did you notice how I shifted way too much, took my hand off the fingerboard way too much unnecessarily? I took my hand off there, I shifted there unnecessarily. I collapsed my hand, which feels good at the moment, but boy, am I gonna get tired after a while playing like this. The more I shifted up, my hand position scrunched, and then I get quite out of tune. So, I want you to think about keeping your fingers close to the fingerboard. Keeping them almost like they're just floating over the fingerboard. So I'm ready to play any note that I want in that position. Also, you can get pretty close to this with keeping your hands close to the fingerboard, but you might slip up sometimes and lift your fingers too much and not have your fingers pressed down. I'm playing C natural and my first finger's up and my pinky's having to do way too much work. So practice your scales slowly in a mirror too so that you can see what's going on. Also, if all my fingers aren't pressed down all the way when I'm playing with my pinky or my second finger, I have a great potential to start buzzing the string like this and the sound isn't gonna come out because I'm not firmly pressing down with all my fingers. So if that happens to you and you start to buzz and you're not sure why, usually it's your left hand. And it's a really simple issue to fix. You just have to remember, mm, I need to press my hand down. So if you're having some of these sort of complications while you're practicing, I always find it useful. Say I'm having um, an issue with buzzing and keeping my hand pressed down and maybe keeping my right hand close to the fingerboard. I'll have on my music stand in front of me just a little note while I'm practicing my scales that says strong left hand, keep right hand lower, just as a little bit of a reminder. And that's totally cool to have because what we want to have as a bass player is a nice strong sound and to be completely clear. Thanks for watching the lesson and I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to learn more from me, please click the link below.